it's Diabetic Danica. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I am going to be answering some of your questions that you left on my Control IQ videos. So I've made two videos so far on the Control IQ software, which is in the Tandem T-Slim X2 insulin pumps. And I asked you guys to ask me questions about them and I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. I myself do not work for Tandem, I just use their pump and I've been using Control IQ since like December, I think, so a few months now. So let's look for some questions. J.M. Hasse said that they just started their training phase for their Tandem and they're wondering if they automatically get Control IQ or they get Basal IQ. So your physician, when you get a new pump, will choose which one to get, at least right now, either Basal IQ or Control IQ when they sign the paperwork for you. Um, so it depends which they choose. If you do get Basal IQ, you can update it on their Tandem device updater through the computer, and so it's pretty easy to do. That's my pump beeping. It's pretty easy to do, and you can do it from home with the exact same pump. Soulfader72 asked, do you know anything about the mobile connection mode? Yeah, so in your Control IQ pump, you're gonna see that there's an option for Bluetooth. And in your Bluetooth settings, you can choose to turn your mobile connection on. Now this is not the Bluetooth to link with your Dexcom, it's actually Bluetooth to link to an app on your phone, which is not yet available. <laughs> but eventually, they're gonna have it linked to your phone, um, and you can initially just see the interface on your phone, and then I think eventually it'll be where you can control it from your phone, but they're not there yet. Um, so it's for eventual linkage with a mobile app. Dean Hibbler is asking in regards to switching pump brands and insurance problems. Um, basically, my understanding, at least in my area, is that most insurance will cover a new insulin pump every four years. So your warranty is typically for four years. After four years, you can switch over to a new pump and they should cover a new pump. As far as I know, there's only one insurance company, I think, that I know of that makes you choose a certain pump brand. Otherwise, any type of pump should be covered if a pump on a whole is covered. Um, but it doesn't hurt to ask and try and submit the paperwork and see if it's covered. Um, but that's typically sort of how it works. Robert Lee asked, does this pump include the closed loop platform? I don't know fully what you mean by that. This is technically an advanced hybrid closed loop um, because you still have to enter your carbs. Um, but it does the automatic basal adjustments and automatic corrections. So it's sort of closed loop, but not entirely fully 100% yet. Jay Phelps wants to know how long did it take to download the new software? Um, oh gosh, I think the training modules took me about an hour and the actual downloading the software took less than 15 minutes, I would say. I guess five to 15 minutes. It was really fast. Brian Burke Martin asked, if you accidentally under bolus for food, at what point does the control IQ logic kick in to correct? Once it simply predicts your blood sugar will be too high, given your IOB is not enough to handle it, or after the full two hours for the food bolus has cleared? Um, well, the active insulin time with control IQ is actually five hours, and so even if it hasn't been five hours, it'll still be looking at how much insulin you have on board, what your blood sugar is, where you're trending, and it'll figure out if you need more insulin. And so if you go back to my video where I explain kind of the algorithm and when it corrects for what numbers, um, and when it adjusts basal for what numbers, that's how it does it. Um, so yeah. He also asked, um, have you been able to figure out how the max basal rate is calculated? So the max basal rate is based on your total daily dose, which you input when you start Control IQ. And I think it said if you've gotten half of your total daily dose in the last two hours, something like that, um, that's your max basal, I think. Kara Kranz wants to know, are you still able to use your different basal profiles? I only have one basal profile, so I'll have to double check here. Let me see, personal profiles. Yep, you can still add more profiles. So the answer is yes. Leland Dennis says, this sounds so exciting. Is it available for Medicare patients as well? Well, the pump is approved for Medicare patients and the Dexcom G6. So it's my understanding that you can get both those things as long as you qualify for an insulin pump and a CGM as a whole. Um, so I think it should be covered. Doesn't have to check, might as well see. Random Vedic 
nice username, says, once you upgrade to Control IQ, do you have the option to use Basil IQ? The answer on that is sadly no. I wish that was an option. I think it'd be really cool if you could choose if you just wanted to be suspended for lows or if you wanted to have both the high and low adjustments for Control IQ, um, but right now it's one or the other and you can't go back to Basil IQ once you've had Control IQ in your pump. Constance Henderson said, if you have an extended bolus going and it predicts a low and suspends your insulin, does it cancel the rest of the extended bolus? I don't know. I'm not sure. I think it would. Um, that's just my thought. That's what I would assume, but I don't know for sure. So I would just say call Tandem and run it by them. Redmain178 says, does it also let you stop without priming 10 units? No, sadly, you still have to prime at least 10 units when you're loading a cartridge and filling the tubing. It'd be nice if that changed though. Nina and Ian Fan 21 says, does Dexcom still lose signal a lot and how does it affect battery life? Um, I don't feel like my Dexcom loses signal a whole, whole lot. It depends. Um, you wanna keep your pump screen facing out and it also helps to have it on the same side of your body as the sensor. Um, it loses sensor signal sometimes, um, but I can't say a lot or not because it's kind of subjective. In terms of battery life, I do think my battery probably dies a little bit faster with Control IQ. I couldn't give you an exact number necessarily, but it's doing more things so it does use more battery. Sandy Stewart wants to know, does this only work with Dexcom? Yes, it's only with the Dexcom G6. Kimberly Avery says, does anyone know if there will be a report available that tracks what changes on average it's making to your basils to make recommendations for changes, similar to Loop? I haven't seen anything like that. I've seen some of the reports for the Control IQ pump downloads, and it does show you, you know, day by day, if your basil is adjusted up or down and things like that, but I haven't seen a report where it trends it for you or makes change recommendations, like for your settings. Um, but I don't know fully what loops looks like, so it's hard for me to answer that. Brenda Hammett wants to know what happens with the T-Slim when data is lost on the Dexcom. So basically, it'll still keep whatever adjustment it was making to your basil um, for, I believe, 15 minutes. So you can be without signal to your Dexcom for 15 minutes, and it'll still be adjusting basil based on the last reading, is my understanding. And then after that, it'll just go back to your normally programmed basal rates. Um, otherwise, you know, you have to have a Dexcom signal to be able to get readings, to be able to adjust off of. So those are all the questions for my first YouTube video. Let's go to the second one. Here's a good question. Nicole Ellison asked, how do you go about treating a low after your insulin suspends? Do you still treat the low or give less carbs to treat? I'm assuming the rebound with stopping insulin and treating would be pretty high. This is an excellent point and something I did not think about when I was first on Control IQ. So I was still treating with the same amount of carbs I normally do. And of course my blood sugar was going way up because it had been suspending my insulin for a while. And so you usually don't need as many carbs to treat a low when your insulin has been suspended like that. So like one night I was like 60 something, I'd been suspended for a while and I literally ate one glucose tab and that was enough to put me back in range and keep me there. So. Pretty cool. Kelly Smith asked why I didn't have a yellow line on my pump for my high alert. It's because I also have my alerts on my phone and so it was getting really annoying to have to silence them on my phone and my pump. So I just have my low alarm set on my pump and my high alarm on my phone and my low alarm on my phone. VA mob member says type two and control IQ. Yeah, if you if you qualify for an insulin pump, um, it's my understanding that you can get the one with Control IQ. Um, you know, if you're taking multiple daily injections a day, two types of insulin, checking blood sugar four times a day, that kind of stuff. Logan Pry or Pre said, "Can you put those extra alerts on Vibrate?" So I mentioned that there's a couple extra alerts with the Control IQ that I found kind of annoying and kind of pointless, um, but it's all or nothing, right? So you have to choose all alerts or all alarms on silent or loud. And some of my alerts and alarms I definitely want to hear, I need to hear. And so I have my alerts on high and my alarms on high. So you could choose vibrate for both of those, but then all of them, all the alerts would be on vibrate, all the alarms. Um, and I forget the difference between alert and alarm, but you can make one high and one vibrate. So maybe I'm just not thinking of it enough. Um, but yeah, it's not like specific ones, like only this control IQ alert I want on vibrate or anything like that. 
Maddie Walding wants to know if the pump learns your schedule or body in any way like the 670G does. It doesn't really learn your body. There's no like period of time like with the 670G where you have to wear the pump for it to get used to your settings and things like that um, because you are going to put in your total daily dose and your body weight and so it uses those things instead of having to learn you um, and then it just adjusts in the moment based on your predicted blood sugars. Justin Shelton wants to know, is there a way to override or pause the automatic insulin adjustments if you notice you're running lower than your CGM says you are? Um, obviously you can correct manually if you're running higher. Yes, you can pop out of control IQ in your pump whenever you want. You'll just go back into your normal pump settings and then it won't be adjusting your insulin. So those were all the questions on my other Control IQ YouTube video. So let me look on Facebook because I did post one of my videos there and I don't know if there's some questions on it. Um, so I don't want to miss out on those. Hey everyone, it's Dan. 87 comments. Carrie Murphy wants to know, what if you want your range to be 70 to 140? Can you change it? I think 180 is a little high to start making changes. Or is it the idea that it'll try to keep you below 160 using basal? You cannot adjust the target range. Um, so all of the parameters that I talked about in my first video about the algorithm, what numbers it uses, those are all preset in the pump. Um, it's what the FDA has approved. I imagine in the future, now that this is approved, that they'll be able to get tighter ranges approved as well, um, hopefully but technically the only tighter range is the sleep activity while you're asleep it gets you a little bit tighter um, but it doesn't do the automatic correction so it's kind of whatever you prefer but yeah right now it's fixed you can't change it Debbie English wants to know when Canada will get it I have no idea I think Canada just got basal IQ so it'll probably be a little bit Amy Lynn basically asks if you're used to doing some other techniques, sugar surfing, that kind of stuff, and getting A1Cs in the fives, would it be likely your A1C would go up since the system um, has a different target, basically? Uh, yeah, so I think for some people the target might be a little bit too loose. If you have a really, really tight control, your A1Cs are very, very um, on the lower side, I think that control IQ could possibly make your A1C go up. I think if your A1C is on the lower side due to lows, that's not a good thing. And so we should be preventing those lows and having your A1C go up a little bit. Um, but I think this is targeting to get your A1C 7% or less um, and not in the ultra, ultra low range. So if you're someone who prefers really, really tight control in terms of like a 6.5% or less A1C or you know low sixes, I think that this could potentially make your A1C go up, yeah. Deanna Jimenez says, do you find you're using a lot more insulin with Control IQ? Um, no, I'm using about the same, a little bit less, um, but I also changed my eating habits recently, so I don't know if it's because of that or because of Control IQ, but I'd say it's about the same. Brittany Powell says, what happens if overnight you get up in the 300s? What does it do in that case? Um, it just suggests it just adjusts basal overnight. It doesn't do the correction, so it alarms at you and it tells you you're high and you have to give the correction yourself. <laughs> Brittany Powell says, you mentioned if you're going high, it will auto bolus, but only if you have recently bolus. What if you're going high and you have no boluses recently? So you misunderstood. What I meant was it has to be at least 60 minutes in, since your last bolus, but it doesn't have to be exactly 60 minutes. There doesn't have to be a previous bolus within 60 minutes. It's just 60 minutes at least. So if it's longer than that, that's totally fine. Whew. Man, okay, that was a lot more questions than I thought. It looks like I've been recording for 27 minutes. This video though is probably a lot shorter than that because I have all these gaps where I was looking up questions. Um, but yeah, hopefully that answered some of your questions. Quick update on what I think of Control IQ now that I've been using it for longer. Um, I've had some ups and downs with Control IQ. I really like it overall. I think it's not making things worse by any means. I think it's definitely improved my time and range. I'm having way less lows, which is awesome. Um, but it's still not perfect. Like I still have spikes in my blood sugar. I still have highs. So I was having a little bit of trouble figuring out exercise with Control IQ because usually when I run, I do like negative 80% basal. And so just having the exercise activity on typically isn't enough to actually fully prevent a low. And so I was finding that I would just take off my pump during the runs, but then I would be super high later. And so I've been trying to figure out ways to under bolus for my meal and still wear the pump in exercise activity and sometimes take it off during the activity, sometimes not, but also 
reconnect right after the activity so I get all my insulin right away. So it's just been hard to figure out how to work around exercise. I think it's definitely helped me prevent lows after exercise though, so like overnight, since I run in the evenings after work, when I go to bed at night, I would sometimes have lows, I'd have to set temporary basils, and I think Control IQ does a great job of preventing those lows. I was hoping with Control IQ I wouldn't have to pre-bolus as early. I noticed for myself, if I don't pre-bolus 10 to 15 minutes early before my meal, I will go high before I come back down. And I was hoping Control IQ would take care of this, but it's not enough to take care of it. I still have to pre-bolus 10 to 15 minutes. Darn it. And as I mentioned earlier in this video, I have discovered I need less carbs to treat a low, usually, not always, but um, if it's been suspending my insulin, of course, I haven't been getting as much insulin, and so I might not need as many carbs to treat my low as I did before. Sometimes, though, I still have needed it, but sometimes just a little bit of carbs is enough. And even after all this time, I have not found a benefit to the you're over 200 and we've been increasing your basal alarm. I still think it's kind of a pointless alarm. It tells me I'm over 200. It tells me that we've been increasing your basal and you're still over 200. I go to bolus to correct and it tells me you have nothing to correct. You have enough insulin on board. So it's really pointless. It doesn't tell me anything. I already have a high alert set. So I get my high alert at 170 during the day and 190 overnight. And then, yeah, so I already know that it's higher and then when it's 200 or it predicts it's going to be 200 it'll be like yo we've been increasing your basal and i'm like oh sorry i'll try to give a correction dose and then it says you don't need a correction dose and i'm just like so why be alert man why be alarm whatever it is alert alarm why the notification <laughs> so i still feel that one is pretty pretty unnecessary but overall i'm happy with control iq definitely kind of still figuring it out it's a different system um and it's not like it fixes everything, um, but I still like it. All right, thank you guys so much for watching this crazy long video. I am going to wrap it up now. Um, feel free to like this video if you really did like it. Subscribe as well to my channel. I make new videos about diabetes all the time, and feel free to leave a comment down below. Thanks, guys. Bye.